on the ABC News Magazine. 2020 with Hugh Downs and Barbara Walters. Are your kids renting a movie this weekend? Horror films like these are the most popular choice. Graphic orgies of blood and violence. And they watch 15 murders in an hour and a half. Children mesmerized. I like the uh, gore. <laughs> but are they harmless? It's always a female victim, and it's generally in a sexual context. With reports that life may now be imitating art, Bob Brown shows you what the kids are watching. VCR Horrors. Also... Horror movies, mutilation, decapitation, torture. Does that sound entertaining? More blood than a blood bank. Have we got your attention? Well, you may be sickened, but what about your kids? They seem to love every moment of today's horror films. Movies that, by comparison, make Frankenstein seem cute and cuddly. If you find this disturbing, just wait, because there is a whole other dimension. There is. Since VCRs, half of American households now have video cassette recorders. And for many children, they're a ticket to R-rated gore that the kids are too young to see at the movies. So, do you know what your children are watching? Well, parents and psychologists are very concerned. And tonight, Bob Brown will show us why. Fair warning, though, there is some graphic violence in this. But we say that for you, not your kids. They've probably already seen it. First, you were frightened by the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Then you were terrorized by Halloween. And now, prepare to be pulverized, traumatized, and hospitalized by... <laughs> You. I like the uh, gore. <laughs> I love blood and guts and stuff, you know. It, it turns, I'm serious, it turns me on, you know, ever since I was a little kid. Because I love, I love the feeling of being scared, you know. Saturday afternoon matinees aren't what they used to be. To begin with, kids don't have to go to the movie theater. They can bring the movie home from the rental store. Some of the most popular kinds of tapes to watch don't resemble the old Hopalong Cassidy or Superman movies. The kids call them slasher or splatter movies. And they get together to watch them at gross-out parties. The movies are extremely violent, sexually provocative, and have graphic displays of mutilation. We asked three groups of kids why the movies appeal to them. I see them with my friends, and we, like, see who can keep their eyes open the longest. Slumber Party Massacre. That was a classic. <laughs> <laughs> this guy just goes around killing people. And that's the plot of all scary movies. Kids get the movies from the horror section of the video store. Most of the violent movies are rated R and aren't supposed to be seen unless you're 17 years old. Others are made directly on videotape and bypass the rating system altogether. Video store owners say the movies are usually in their top three rental categories. Kids say it more simply. On Monday morning, the biggest attraction is a kid that's seen one of these disgusting movies of the weekend. And, I mean, the, in, in incredible detail. And then this guy takes his drill, all right, and he goes and rams it right through the guy's eye. And everybody go, and he's got a big cry around. <gasps> and it's ridiculous, because, I mean, he's like the focal point of action for that day. While the movies may be the rage with kids, it's a different story when their parents learn about what they believed were simply horror movies. I considered myself an informed, concerned, parent and mother as we all do and I, I i had no idea that it was at the depth of this uh absolute mutilation what particularly shocks parents is the degree and repetition of gore and violence in the movie these parents are watching make them die slowly Two women are tortured for hours and then forced to watch as their male companion suffers another indescribable torturing process and is then beheaded. In this movie, Evil Dead 2, the male star is killed early in the film. But not only does he return as a spirit and appear to be killed several more times, 
One of the film's highlights occurs when he cuts off his own hand with a chainsaw. Please don't hurt me. You the female star also no. appears to be killed several times. No. How did it get to this? What happened to old-fashioned horror, the sounds and mental images of Hitchcock and the other masters? Chas Balin is a critic, author, and publisher who specializes in this genre. His books include such titles as The Gore Score and Horror Holocaust. How are horror movies different now than they were when you were a kid? So I think we've got a real impatient kind of contemporary audience now that's Why? more raised on TV, that's more raised on MTV. The audience wants some noise. They want some thunder. They want the smoke machines. They want some loud rock music, and they want 15 murders in an hour and a half. They don't want to hinge a movie around two murders or three, like in a, a psycho kind of film. They want to have a body count. That may be true today, but certainly Alfred Hitchcock's films were scary, and they didn't use graphic violence, even in the famous shower curtain scene from Psycho. Two films seem to have provided the impetus for productions to become more and more explicit. The first was Night of the Living Dead in 1968, and the second was the 1974 release of Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Each was made for less than $200,000, and they reportedly have grossed more than $50 million apiece. The phenomenal financial success of Texas Chainsaw Massacre in particular led to a glut of Hollywood filmmakers, including several pornographers, moving into the horror field. And they'd taken that same formula, and instead of those explicit sex shots, they substitute women being killed and murdered by men. And stories of members of organized crime wanting in on the action have also surfaced. In fact, Texas Chainsaw Massacre was distributed by a company headed by Louis Perino. Not only was Perino the producer and distributor of the porn hit Deep Throat, he is also considered by police to be an operative of the Joseph Colombo Mafia family. Texas Chainsaw Massacre and its sequel, Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2, are still two of the biggest hits in the video rental market. It is the explosion of that video rental market that fuels the modern horror films. But even with all the violence, it's still only acting and special effects. So if kids like it, which they obviously do, what's wrong with making the violent films? Often they're seeing slasher movies that um, the central plot is based on rapes and, and chases with women being pursued with buzz saws and drills and being brutalized, raped, murdered, and parents don't realize that. Dr. Dan Lintz is a psychology professor at UCLA and has co-authored a book on violence and behavior patterns. The reason that we undertook these studies to begin with was because we feared that people were getting desensitized to the violence in these films, particularly violence against women. And the results of his four-year study show that people were affected by the movies, particularly in their attitudes toward women in real life. When we put them in a situation where they had to make a judgment about a female victim in another context, let's say a rape victim or a victim of battering, we found that those people that were exposed to these teenage slasher films were less sensitive to that victim than were subjects who were exposed to other kinds of films or who were exposed to no films at all. This is it. Here we go. Nice, nice, nice. Right Linnea Quigley is currently one of the leading females in horror movies. She's posing here for the poster of her next film, Tantalizer. And her roles do seem to have a common thread. I've uh, been buried alive in mud. I've been victimized. I've been beat up. I've been impaled on antlers. I've been eaten by monsters. I've had zombies attack me. Uh, just about everything that could happen has. And even a few All of the, the kids we talked to are concerned about women usually being portrayed as the victims. Like Why does it always have to be women being killed? Why couldn't it be men? So that's the whole point. I hate it because I always kept that in mind of like, why always women? But by far, most of the kids told us that parents and psychologists are overreacting. That it's just in the movies. A lot of times the women are the victims because I guess women are supposed to be, you know, so fragile and so scared and everything, but it doesn't bother me, you know. To sort of isolate movies as, you know, a major desensitizer of kids uh, is, is probably giving it uh, more impact than it deserves. 
Andy Pfeiffer heads Empire Productions, one of the largest makers of horror films and risque videos. In terms of our films, they, the violence is largely tongue-in-cheek. Ah! Walter Jostin is the owner of Paragon Films, a new company that has had commercial and critical success with two horror movies, including Witchboard. It's a changing world. I don't think we're showing anything in our films that are... Uh, that is um, worse than anything they're going to see on the news or on the street. The difference is, I think, that with the slasher film, what you have is this preponderance of violent images against women. In the news, the victims tend to be spread across many aspects of society within certain strata of society, males and females alike, black and white. In slasher films, it's always a female victim, and it's generally in a sexual context. You have a son, right, who was... Still fairly young. Yes, he's five. Um, at what point would you want him to start watching some of these films? He has seen all of our films to date. We don't feel he's seen anything that is uh, jarring enough to, to scar him for life or anything, so to speak. But the district attorney in Boston, Massachusetts, Newman Flanagan, thinks five-year-olds are too young to see these films, and he has a reason. Last November, a five-year-old boy, assisted by a three-year-old friend, stabbed a two-year-old girl 17 times with a knife. They talked to their parents and the, the police officers after the incident, and they told them uh, uh, that they were talking about the Friday the 13th and Freddy Krueger and, and the type of knife uh, that, that, that was used. And uh, here's a five-year-old that when they brought out knives, he said, that's the type of knife. That's the knife that we used. And they because of their ages, the boys could not be prosecuted. The two-year-old girl is recovering. In tiny Beckville, Texas, the story had a different ending. Last May, at a graduation party for seniors from Beckville High, students were drinking beer and whiskey at a classmate's home. Some were watching a video called Faces of Death, which purports to show not fictional, but actual recordings of violent deaths. Two of the students disappeared from the party. They were David Metcalf and Teresa Ann Downing. Metcalf later returned. But the next day, Teresa Ann Downing's body was discovered near this cemetery, not far from where the party was held, partially clothed, smothered, and beaten to death. Metcalf originally confessed to the murder and then recanted his confession. He has pleaded not guilty and is awaiting trial. Police believe drinking probably had more to do with the crime than the video. But interestingly, in his high school yearbook, Metcalf lists his favorite movie as Faces of Death. There were moves underway in several state legislatures to require that all videos display prominently a rating that describes their content. And many parents also want a better definition of R-rated. We would like the Motion Picture Association to consider a further category of the R rating. We would call it RV. And that would classify a film as being rated R because of its sexually violent or its extremely violent content. The bottom line is that even if new rating requirements are put into place, it's a voluntary system. And it isn't against the law for stores to continue to rent these violent videos to children. And it's also an issue on which a mother and her child continue to disagree. Even if the films have special effects, and we all know that they're not real, in a child's perception or in, a, in an adult's perception, we're still dealing with repeated violent acts and the association of sex and violence that may make us more callous to those acts committed in real life. You can't just say, okay, you can't see it and you can. Because, you know, some people, they're 25 and, you know, they can't mentally handle these killings. And, you know, some people when they're three years old can see a rated R movie and know that it's not real and just have it be there and be entertaining and scary at the same time, but not be, you know, completely inappropriate. <laughs> what a bright child. Children are very wise. I guess in some ways that increases a parent's it, responsibility. I can see why, yeah. A couple of questions, Bob. Can children rent these cassettes, any cassettes from these rental places? Well, it's against the rules if it's rated R, but it's not against the law. So the answer is yes. And many of the video stores, in fact, are staffed by, um, by teenagers during, during the weekends or after hours. So it's very easy for children to walk in and, and rent a video. The other thing is when you rent these, you know what you're renting maybe, but, but when it comes to the box, 
it's pretty plain. It just has the title. And uh, how can a, a parent, or anyone renting for that matter, know exactly what the content is? If the motion picture has been in theatrical release, it'll have its rating right on the box. If it was never released in theaters, it won't have a rating at all. So in that case, I would say a parent should look at the title, and if it has no rating, they might want to um, find out more about yeah. it before they let a child watch it. Right. Thank you, Bob.